I'll, I'll just start with first the practice stuff. I think we saw, could be wrong, um, Samo, Mokite, and Deshaun Holt we didn't see. Are they okay? Yeah, you know, all those guys, again, I mentioned that, you know, Sam has been battling some things. Mokite has been battling that toe. And so we usually traditionally kind of give them an extra day of rest, but they both have practiced. Uh, Deshaun Holt, um, I think, and I think I made the adjustment with him on the, did I make the adjustment? Yeah. Deshaun wound up having knee surgery uh, this week, but it's not a season ending thing. We'll know he uh, had a, a slight lower leg in injury that we had to get, go in and fix it this week. And so, you know, he's out for this game. Um. And then I was going to, oh, oh, and while we're at it, is Kenny Bennett coming along okay? Yeah, you know, he's practicing. Um, as with these hamstrings, they're day-to-day. They're -day -day and, you know, unlike Jacorian, who, you know, has been able to get back and as close to it, uh, right now Kenny's battling. And so he will be continue to be a, a game-time decision. And luckily for us, we're playing here at home, so we don't have to travel him and we can warm him up and see what he feels like. Um, all right, I'll ask my real question now. Um, uh, it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like Talia is pretty hard on himself, at least like when he when he talks to us. And, and I'm just kind of curious, like for you as a coach, like what do you what do you like about a player like that who kind of sees all of his mistakes and kind of gravitates toward those, but then also kind of how do you manage that and make sure he kind of stays confident? Yeah, you know what's the the difficult piece is you know as I've always described him to you guys is that. He is very, very competitive. Um, and, you know, it, I, he is his own worst enemy. You know, and that's why I kind of got a little defensive the other day when, you know, when he, when it said, hey, he's not playing well because, I mean, a guy was 17 or 27 with five drops. And so, you know, the quarterback rating doesn't take into account drops. And then all of a sudden he's 22 of 27 for close to 300 yards with these catches. And, um one thing I've learned from my, my late mentor, friend, um, Trevor Moad, is that negative self-talk is 17 times more powerful than positive self-talk. And that's why we always talk about being neutral around here. And it's really important from a mindset training that as a coach, I've got to, you know, be the guy to try to get Leah back to neutral. And, you know, we have our, a, a little deal that I do when I take my hand and go over my face with him. That's me telling him, go to neutral because he will let a play linger um, and it affects the next play, which affects the next play. And that's where, you know, if you go back to the Iowa game when he throws the, the tipped interception, again, it snowballs because you have to find that ability to get to neutral, to not let negative things linger. I know it's your job to write about it. Um, negativity sells. You know, it's what people, it's what this society is all about. And, what I've tried to do with our team is develop a, a positive mindset of, you know what? Yeah, we're going to coach the crap out of you. We're going to make sure that we uh, attack the things that you aren't doing well and, and, and get it fixed. But you've got to come from the approach of, of positivity because, you know, you, you see a guy like Daryl Jones have a couple drops in that game and he's beating the ground up because of the drop. And I'm just telling you, it, it it's not not a good 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 performance uh, mindset to have, and so you know we're in the business of educating young people, and I know it's a long winded answer that I've gone into some philosophical things, but it's important that uh, we understand that we we got to teach these young guys that it ain't gonna get fixed by having negative self talk about what you've done or what's happened. It's always about how to correct it and be very technical in correcting it which is why when you always ask me about penalties, what do you do if a guy keeps getting penalties? Well, what do you do if your son keeps touching the hot stove? I mean, at some point they're going to learn. And, you know, obviously we'll do things to teach the technical part, pass interference, holding, uh, you know, but the, the, the mental piece of seeing the ball and not jumping off sides, that's, that's where I get really upset. Go to Jacob Steinberg. You got enough to write about there, don't you? Five different stories and one answer. Hey, Coach, uh, this is kind of a big picture question for you. You're obviously someone who's very passionate about mental health, and it's something a cause that's 
near and dear to you. So for players like Jay Sean and Durrell, who suffered another season ending injury, obviously every injury situation is unique, but what's your message to them about the mental aspect of the recovery process? Because I know speaking with a lot of athletes that can often be more challenging than the physical part of the recovery process. No, and you hit it right, the head right, hit it right on its head with what you're talking about. And, you know, we've done some things here. I know, you know, because of our ability that we went out and hired a, a, a sports psychiatrist to come in and to work with our team. Um, we have a group that, that meets with our injured players. And one of the things we try to do with our injured players is incorporate them as coaches. You know, it worked really well a few years ago when we had, uh, you know, what's his name, Antoine um, Wheezy. Antoine Richardson tore his knee up and, you know, couldn't play. And so we made him kind of a student coach. We traveled him. I think the big, the big piece of it is, is keeping them involved with your team. And so our injured players, if you notice, they come out to practice and they're usually, you know, dressed like a, a normal player, even if they can't go. Um, and then sometimes they have to go in and lift and do some rehab stuff. But then we bring them back out as much as we can to have them around instead of, you know, shoving them in a closet where nobody knows where they are and they just disappear. I think it's important to keep them around their peers and around our program. And so, you know, but with both these guys and the injuries they've uh, sustained, I think it starts with what I talked about earlier, a positive mindset, you know, instead of the woe is me. And, you know, I went through this, obviously, you know, my daughter had back-to-back -back ACL surgeries and I tried to find every article I could about all the national team women that had multiple knee injuries. I mean, these girls, the girls that are playing on our national team, they had seven ACLs. So you will not feel sorry for yourself because you've had two. I mean, these are very common injuries now to, to come back from. Um, but I think the mindset and the mental approach of knowing that it's not final, like, okay, you lost this opportunity, but now let's figure out how to get healthy, get you back and, and stronger than ever to come back and, and have a chance to be successful. Thank you. Jacob Richmond. Hey coach, I had a question about the uh, offensive line. It's a unit that has, um, you know, looked the same most of the season, luckily not had too many injuries. So just curious, particularly in these past few games, how you felt they've come along. I feel like we haven't talked about them as much. Yeah, you know, the, 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 this is the one group, as I said, that has continued to improve. Um, I will say that because of our lack of depth that, you know, if you watch and look at some of these guys, when they play in practice, they've got more pads and contraptions and braces on than you you've, you've ever see. And so this group has one showed me that the, the mental toughness that goes along with playing up front in the trenches, because this time of the year, none of them are healthy. They've got all elbows and shoulders and knees and things that, you know, the the day-to-day the -day bumps and bruises that go along with playing a very physical position where every play is like being in a car accident. Um, but I've been happy with the effort that they give. Um, we've had a tough go at it. Uh, you know, I know with the Iowa as well as the Ohio State week where, you know, our best players maybe didn't perform uh, as well as they have, but I thought they bounced back decently uh, this past week against uh, Minnesota. We had a couple of missed assignments in there that starts with the communication part. Um, you know, with our center where Eric Harris kind of aligns us all correctly or gets us correctly aligned. And we had a couple of issues there, but for the most part, I've been pleased with the group. Um, and I, and I, we're going to need them to play really well this weekend for us to find a way to, to get, a, get a win. Let's go to Dylan Spilka. Coach, it seems like Indiana is going to have to go with that true freshman at quarterback this weekend. What have you guys been uh, preparing to look at him, you know, some of his plays? Because he hasn't received many snaps this season. So what do you look at to kind of prep for a guy that hasn't really received much playing time? Yeah, I mean, what you do is you go by their skill set. You know, we, we've played this group quite a bit during our tenure here. Uh, obviously been on the eastern side of the league. Um, you know, without getting into too much detail, we look to see what his skill set is like compared to the other quarterbacks we faced. And I mean, to us, he's a lot like the, Pat, uh, the Peyton Ramsey guy that, that uh, played quarterback at Indiana and finished at Northwestern, kind of that type of skill set. And so when uh, we've done our research to look and see when they've had this type of quarterback, what things they've done with it, um, we think we saw, you know, 
a pretty good idea of some of the things that he does well with his small sample size of uh, plays. But, you know, we've got to prepare for basically what his skill set is. But to, to us, we know that one thing that they will do to attack us because we've shown, you know, the propensity the last week or two to not be able to handle the run. Uh, we expect them to run the ball. And so for us, that's we need to focus on what we need to do. Um, and obviously, if they play the young quarterback, you know, do a great job of taking away the things that uh, allow him to his or his strengths from him. And, uh, you know, we've been working all week long to try to put a good plan together for that. Go back to Jacob Richmond. A non-football question, uh, just that you're getting back to Maryland Stadium. I don't think we ever got your thoughts on the new video board. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's a um, welcome sight. You know, it's, uh, you know, from what I hear, it's the biggest, if not one of the biggest in the country. Um, as I like to say, I, it's just another uh, sign that, you know, the commitment that our administration is making uh, to, to, to get football off the ground and, and, and give us a chance to, to get football going here at Maryland. Um, very appreciative of it because from a fan base standpoint, it uh, increases the, you know, their interaction with us as a team and, uh, you know, the fan experience. I think it's great for that part of it um, with the new sound system there. But, you know, for me, I just see it as another example of the people here uh, wanting football to take that next step and in, in, in investing in it. And that's why, uh, you know, I, I won't sleep very well until I get this football program back to where we all want it, which to me, you know, similar to this 0-1 team that's coming back to be honored. You know, that's the kind of the, the, the goal for me is to build it the way that team was built. And, and we're on our way to doing it, you know, and, and, and excited about what our future looks like. Go back to Jacob Steinberg. Hey, Coach, the first four games you guys had 16 sacks defensively. In the past couple games, you guys haven't had as much success getting home to the quarterback. I'm just curious if you've noticed maybe a common trend the past three games watching the tape that uh, has not been as successful, that was maybe more successful the first four games. Yeah, I think the common trend is the amount of rushing attempts that the other teams have had. Um, you look at what Minnesota does on offense. They run the ball. They attempted 14 passes. Uh, you look at what Iowa does, they run the ball. Um, you know, Ohio State kind of was an anomaly in that they did both really well, but they threw it over our heads because they took advantage of uh, maybe some matchup things. But, you know, I also, when you don't have sacks, I still see Sam O back there with some TFLs. And that to me in the run game is the equivalent of a sack. Um, but we haven't had enough of those. And um, if anything, the glaring thing for me is, no takeaways. You know, we had a bunch of takeaways early in the first four games, and I think we've gone four straight games now without a defensive takeaway. I haven't seen a ball on the ground. I haven't seen an interception tipped or dropped. I mean, it's it's crazy for me to that 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 you don't see those opportunities. And to me, that's the uh, one of the key ingredients to having a win is winning the big play battle and then winning the turnover battle. And you know, we turned it over once last week. Uh, and didn't get any, and and we got to figure out how to create some ball disruptions on the defensive side of the ball. And but I do think that if people decide to throw it, we've helped ourselves with the pass rushers and in, in, in our system, but we just haven't faced the, the 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 throw game like like we maybe did in the first half of the season. Is everyone good? Last thing I got though, I got this little tip for you guys. So Ralph Frazier, when he came in in the 01, he started a tradition of uh, wearing red on red for homecoming. And so we will, in honor of Coach Frazier coming back and that tradition that I was here when he started it, you know, um, even though I'm not a big fan of it, but we will be wearing red on red in honor of uh, Coach Frazier and the tradition he started in the hopes of building this thing like he built that, that, that 01 team and the rest of his uh, tenure here. So just a side note. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.